Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical Israelites. This is strictly for educational purposes and commentary of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. The Black Irish Celts, who are Israelites, Shalawam. Are the Irish the children of the biblical Israelites? Are they or are they not? Some Hebrew Israelite scholars did believe that the Irish could trace their paternal lineage back to the 12 tribes of Israel. To understand this matter a little bit more clearly, we're going to research a little bit of Irish history in the Americas. Let's start off with the World Book Encyclopedia, Volume U to V, Volume 20, page 155, The History of the United States, 1607 to 1753. In those times, there were two types of labor. To the left, you have an indentured servant. To the right, you have enslaved people. Servant under chattel slavery. The industrious colonists worked hard to establish communities in the wilderness. A northern colonist shaves a board to size for a house he is building. Slaves on a southern plantation pack tobacco for shipment to Europe as plantation owners look on. 155, page 155 continues. Some Europeans came to America seeking religious freedom. In addition to the Puritans, Roman Catholics, Quakers, and Huguenots. They included Jews and members of German Protestant sects. Other Europeans became colonists for economic reasons. Some were well enough off, but saw America as a place where they could become rich. Many poor Europeans also became colonists. Most of them came to America as indentured servants. An indentured servant agreed to work for another person called a master in America. In return, the master paid for the servant's transportation and provided the servant with food, clothing, and shelter. Most agreements between servants and masters lasted about four years, after which the servants were free to work for themselves. Still, other people who came to America had no choice in the matter. They included prisoners from overcrowded English jails, Irishmen captured by the English in battle and black Africans captured and into tribal warfare and sold to the European traders. The prisoners and captives were sold into service in America. 
it should have read Israelites instead of black Africans. And the Irishman that was captured by the English in battle, that's who this subject matter is about. The black Irish, the Celts. The captives in prisoners. The Jews living in West Africa and the Irish and Scotsmen, Jacobites, who supported the son and grandson of King James, Charles I and Charles II. Page 155 continues. At first, the blacks have the same legal status as white indentured servants. But by about 1660, black equality had faded. Many masters began extending the period of service of their black servants indefinitely. This marked the beginning of slavery in North America. In the beginning of this video, I made a comment that established the premise of this video. That there were some Hebrew scholars who believe the Irish were and are Hebrew Israelites. In order to illustrate that point, I would like to show you a uh, a movie that um, recorded an event that took place in 1981. President Barack Obama in New York City, 1981. In one scene in the film, Barry, that documents the life of President Barack Obama, a then younger version of the 44th President of the United States of America is casually walking the concrete canyons of Manhattan with an aura of lightheartedness, but with a sense of self-control determination that characterize the pedestrians of one of the busiest cities in the world. Then suddenly, out of the blue, something extraordinary happens. The then young Barack Obama encounters three Hebrew Israelites in the midst of one of their open air lectures that they are so famously known for, or what is commonly known as street preaching or teaching. He stops, calm and cool, and patiently listens to what the speaker is demonstrating to the audience that has gathered around to listen to these enigmatic men, who attire doesn't seem to reflect this era, but harkens back to another time and place. He waited patiently for what probably seemed like an eternity to the man who would overcome insurmountable odds to become president of the most powerful country in the world, militarily and financially. Understandably, he had a nagging question in his mind. Why won't anybody challenge these guys? Clearly their logic is flawed. The foundation of their faith is based on a flawed translation, the King James Version Bible, commissioned by King James the First of England, a man that would no doubt never support their claims of being descendants of the biblical lost tribes of Israel. These guys don't have a leg to stand on. Then Barack Obama makes a comment. Wasn't King James a white 
I'm bleeping out the word. President Obama was asking a question and making a statement. You men have a bad reputation in the eyes of the public. People think you are racist, demagogues, but you use the King James Version Bible and nobody associates King James with black nationalism. But the speaker gave a surprisingly strange answer. Pointing to a picture, the speaker said, here's King James right here. Take a good look. He looks like Billy D. Williams, if you ask me. President Obama reaction wasn't surprising. He didn't seem impressed with the answer, but he politely said, if you say so, brother, and calmly walked away, seemingly continuing to his predetermined destination before this interesting random encounter on the streets of New York back in 1981. According to the film, this was an observation and review of an chance encounter with President Barack Obama and the Hebrew Israelites in 1981. You can watch this scene in the film Barry on Netflix. This is the image of King James used in the film Barry, but it's not the image used by the Hebrew Israelites in their open air lectures. The image used by the Hebrew Israelites is a historical accurate image. One clear point I'm trying to make is that the Hebrew Israelites do not represent a form of black nationalism or pan-Africanism or black or white supremacy. They seem to challenge the ideas of modern race theories and find them incompatible with the biblical table of nations found in the book of Genesis chapter 11 where paternal descent and not color determines a person's identity or heritage. In the literature of the original Israeli school of universal practical knowledge, these are the men that President Obama would have encountered in 1981. They listed the Irish as people who they considered to have ethnic ties to the biblical 12 tribes of Israel. They believed the Irish were Hebrew Israelites. This was a book from the Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge in 1995. At this time, they changed their name from Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge to Universal Church of Universal Practical Knowledge. But still, this is 1995, 33 years ago. In the book, they place the image of King James that they used in their public lectures. King James I, King of England, Great Britain, France and Ireland, son of Queen Mary of the Scots, nephew of Queen Elizabeth I, grandson of Henry VIII. James the first was a black Jew. He was the orchestrator of the King James Version Bible, 1611, widely used today in the world. Reigned from 1603 to 1625. He died at 59 years old. So this was the image that 
the Hebrew Israelites back in 1981 would have used to show President Barack Obama that they had a legitimate reason for using the King James Version Bible because they considered King James a man of color and a Jew who was black. In the film, Barry, the Hebrew Israelite speaker made a comment to President Obama, referring to the image of King James that he, the speaker, was pointing to. And he said, the speaker, he looks like Billy D. Williams to me. The speaker was comparing the facial features of King James to Billy D. Williams the world-renowned black American actor who played Lando Carissian in the Star Wars franchise. Although it's an interesting comparison, it's not accurately reflecting the ideas that the Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge was espousing in 1981. And this is because Percy Sutton face was used to illustrate the facial features of King James. And on the left, we have an image of King James. And to the right, we have an image of Percy Sutton, who the Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge used to explain why they considered the image they was using was an image of a black man or man of color. In the eyes of some Hebrew Israelite scholars, Percy Sutton was the splitting image of King James I of England. Wikipedia, Percy Sutton. Percy Ellis Sutton. He was born November 24th, 1920, and died December 26, 2009. He was an American political and business leader, an activist in the civil rights movement, and a lawyer. He was also a freedom writer and the legal representative for Malcolm X. He was the highest ranking African American elected official in New York City when he was Manhattan Borough President from 1966 to 1977, the longest tenure at that position. He later became an entrepreneur whose investments included the New York Amsterdam News and the Apollo Theater in Harlem. Percy Sutton was a splitting image of King James I of England. Hebrew Israelite scholars said Percy Sutton resembled King James I of England. And here is a picture of Percy Sutton to the left and Malcolm X to the right. And once again, we have an image of King James I of England to the left and an image of Percy Sutton to the right. The Hebrew Israelites are not a group 
but an ethnic type of Jew. Their historical perspective and insight shouldn't be scoffed at, but it often is. The black American Jew have openly identified themselves in New York and the Northeast since colonial times. Aaron Lopez was an eyewitness of black American Jews. Aaron Lopez, born, raised, and married in Portugal, came to America in 1752, aged 21 years old. Sensing renewed Spanish inquisitorial zeal, he fled Spain for Newport, Rhode Island, quickly set up businesses trading rum, furniture, candles, and slaves, had a fleet of ships harvesting whale oil. He is credited with introducing sperm whale oil to America because he knew Jews needed smokeless candles for Shabbat or the Sabbath. And building Toro Synagogue, the first synagogue in America. This is what Aaron Lopez had to say about black American Jews and colonial times. This is from a Cyclopedia of African American History, 1619 to 1895. Turning from elite Jews who have numerous records to the poor peddlers and underclass that began arriving in the 1760s from Eastern Europe. Some evidence of connections between blacks and Jews in the elusive commercial underworld of the port cities can be found. Blacks, so-called black Jews and so-called white Jews had business connections in port cities. Aaron Lopez noted that blacks or mulattoes from the West Indies tried to pass themselves off as Jews in Newport, Rhode Island. They weren't passing themselves off. They were Jews. Thereby gaining access to the synagogues, welfare funds, and commercial connections. These black Jews were part of the worldwide business and commercial connections of Jews worldwide. These Jews are where the Jews of Harlem come from, the commandment keepers. And then the Israeli school of universal practical knowledge. There were always so-called black men who knew that they were Jews. Even from the beginning of this country. So this, this document is from the Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge in 1995. This is a list of people, people groups, who they considered were descended from Hebrew Israelites. And on the bottom, in the circle of red, is the word or name Irish. And the circle of red, Irish. You have also in this list, it's an interesting list, Gaelic. You have Welsh and so on. But this video is just dealing with the Irish. The Hebrew Israelites back in 1995 considered the Irish as Hebrew Israelites. This document is from 1995 from the Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge. And on the list of people who are Hebrew Israelites, you can clearly see the name Irish. 
They were not a black nationalist or pan-African school. Race doesn't seem to play a factor on identifying who is a historical Hebrew Israelite. This is an article in Wikipedia on black Irish, black Germans and other Europeans of black ancestry was hiding their black ancestry by calling themselves black Irish, black Dutch. They came to America with black ancestry from Scotland, Ireland, Germany, but they passed as white people because they had light complexions. Black Irish folk folklore. The historical term Black Irish was a myth, most likely created and popularized in the 19th and 20th centuries by Irish Americans to conceal interracial unions with African Americans. It almost exactly parallels the phrase Black Dutch or Black Germans, which was also used in the United States to hide racial identity and is similar to a myth used by many families in the southern United States who would claim descent from a Cherokee princess. I mean they had black ancestry but they would say a Cherokee princess. In order to conceal descent from African Americans, they were black Europeans who came over with black ancestry. The black Irish myth proposed that a strain of Irish people with black hair and dark complexions, referred to as black Irish, were the descendants of Spanish sailors shipwrecked during the Spanish Armada of 1588. They used that lie to conceal the fact that they were people of color, but could pass for white. In reality, of the roughly 5,000 Spanish sailors who were recorded as being wrecked off the coast of Ireland and Scotland, the very few that survived the wrecks were either hunted down and killed by English troops or immediately returned to Spain and thus could not have impacted the Irish gene pool in any significant manner. In 1912, Irish author James Joyce asserted a different version of the myth, suggesting in an article that the residents of Galloway were of the true Spanish type. In Europe, if you were of black ancestry, they were say that you are of the Spanish type. Own, owing to their interaction and trade with the Spanish in the medieval era. So they were trying to explain why these black Europeans existed. And when they were seen or, and they were seen because the nobles of Europe was of black ancestry, or as the article highlights, the true Spanish type. So King James, King Charles I, King Charles II, was of the true Spanish type. The true Spanish type existed in England, Ireland, France, Germany, Poland, Russia, and that's why scholars from the Hebrew community always considered that there were many Irish men and women who were of black ancestry, but they were passing for white because of the restrictions 
in America.